In this video, we are going to talk about something that many people usually don't like to talk about or either ignore, and that is emotions. So make yourself comfortable, grab a snack or drink, and get ready to talk about our feelings. For many, many years, many kind of scientists, just like psychiatrists, psychologists, behavioral scientists, have tried to figure out more and more how emotions work. And although we have found a lot of new things, like for instance, we've learned about brain regions, we've learned about the importance of neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine, um, and many other stuff, we still don't really know exactly how emotions work. In the late 1900s, and following up throughout the 20th century, many different psychologists have tried to um, create models that describe emotions and although there are many many kind of models these days um, this is not the pinpoint what we're going to talk about but we're going to dive more deeper in a uh, more recently created discipline and that is um, emotional management as the name might suggest uh, emotional management is about managing your emotions. It's about firstly understanding what the emotions are, what you are feeling, where they come from and what they mean. I believe that the most of the problems that are existing today in our world come from miscommunication. Most of us are not good at communicating uh, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, what we're believing. Usually what we do, what most people do, is we just bottle up these emotions, we don't communicate them to the other people because it's not something you do in our society. Um, if you're angry with your boss, you don't go to the boss and, and tell him or her why you are angry. <laughs> and because a lot of people never actually learned how to communicate these, these emotions, they usually don't really understand themselves what they are or what they are feeling in the first place. And this just leads to people being insecure, people being um, unable to know what they're feeling, unable to understand themselves, unable to understand why they are actually feeling or what they are actually missing or what they actually want from life. It's just like um, the author James Baldwin said, I believe that if we understood ourselves better, we would damage ourselves less. So now we understand why it's important to being able to communicate emotions and the impact that it can have on society and individual life, let's talk about how we can do it. And for that, I will ask you to <laughs> think of an onion, because emotions are like onions. No, really, emotions are like onions. Um, why? In the way that they are layered. They have layers. And we are going to talk about those layers. Layer number one, acknowledging the emotion. First of all, the first step to dealing with your emotion is to actually acknowledge and identify the emotion and accept that it is real. Accept that it is there, accept that it is important, accept that it is trying to tell you something. This could be as simple as, hey, I am angry, I am really angry. Or just, hey, I feel sad, I feel demotivated, I am scared. Easy as that. Let's imagine this example. You have a brother and you are used to sending him a lot of text messages um, because you want to communicate some things, some things. it's important to you. So you uh, text your brother on a daily basis but he doesn't respond to you as fast as you would like or on a daily basis as you do. In that sense, after a while, you get sick of it um, and you get angry. The second layer is um, understanding the why. What do I mean with understanding the why is just as it sounds, why are you feeling the way that you're feeling? This sounds as simple as just asking you why, like why am I angry, why am I sad, why am I this, why am I that? Um, but of course sometimes it's not as easy to actually find the answer to um, that question, but next question is basically the next layer is asking why. Why are you angry? To go back to the example that we give, um, let's say Jimmy <laughs> um, is the person we're talking about. He already dis um, discovered I am angry. Okay, why is he angry? Well, he is angry because he sends text messages to his brother, but his brother doesn't respond um, as much as he does. But of course you can go to a deeper level with this why, and it's actually find the real reason 
Why? For instance, if you go back to Jim, um, he says he's angry because his brother doesn't respond to his texts as much as he does. Why does that make him angry? You can say, okay, I just, I just told you because I don't get as much response as I give him. Um, well, but the underlying why is probably because, or for Jim, it is because this makes him feel less important. He finds it important that to communicate properly, to communicate a lot throughout the day and to exchange texts with his brother while his brother might not think so. And in that way, he feels less important. He feels maybe unloved. He feels um, confused, like, why am I giving so much love to my brother in his own personal way and why am I not getting it back? So that's the real why. Layer number three, the underlying values. The thing with emotions is they usually, on a deeper level, um, tell you something about what you believe about something. This is the simple reason why people have can have different opinions, because they have a set of beliefs about something um, that just differs from each other. Some people might for instance think that it's really important to be punctual and always be in time, while others um, don't care as much because they don't um, give any value to it. There it is, value. So Jim, in this um, hypothetical example, actually has put a lot of value on getting this response back from his brother. He created a set of beliefs which said, if I get response um, back from my brother as much as I sent messages to him, that is a sign of how much he loves me, of how much importance he, uh, of how important he thinks I am. So if I sent him 20 messages a day and he only responds to five, or he only sends me five, that means that I am less important than him or less significant than him because I um, get less messages than I, I receive less messages than I send out to him. So, okay, so far we have gone through these several steps. We have first identified emotion, then we have tried to find out the why behind emotion, why it makes us angry and what it says about certain values we have or a set of beliefs we have about life. And so next thing is probably the most crucial thing, but also the hardest. The great thing about a set of beliefs or values is that we can change them. We can change how we look at things. We can change how we feel about things. And that is the power that we personally have. We can change how we see things or how we react to things. And of course, this sounds easy, but it is so hard. Um, this requires a process of constant reflection, um, of getting conscious about what you're doing. And that is not an easy thing because at the same time you will confront yourself with yourself and you will sometimes realize hey look here maybe it is something that i am responsible for and something that i have to take um, responsibility over as said before it is a skill and to become better at it needs time and effort this asks from you to be conscious and intentional about things and also being open to other ideas and to other things and to maybe the idea that you're the problem <laughs> sometimes. When you come to the level of understanding the values behind an emotion, challenge them. Um, think about, is this really reality? Is this really logical? Is this really what is happening? For instance, in the example of Jim and his brother, does it mean that his brother doesn't love him or thinks he's less important than himself because he doesn't send as much text messages um, as his brother does to him. Of course not. I think every logical person would understand that this is not a metric that can show how important a person is. But nevertheless, they both have different uh, value judgment about them. So for Jim to realize that this is illogical and then better understand like, oh, if this doesn't mean, if this is not a valuable metric to decide if my brother loves me or not or thinks he's um, important or not, he can then think again about his emotion, about his angriness, about his being angry, about is it logical for me to be angry? Is there any need to stay angry or frustrated? And then you'll come to the conclusion that no, there's no need to be angry. Um, 
but what we can do is talk about it. So I want to end this video with some practical tips and ideas on how you can do this. First of all, see this as a process. It is a long journey to understand yourself better, to understand where your emotions are coming from, to understand some values you have about certain things. So take your time with it and don't expect it to just come like that. Be patient with yourself, be patient with others, be willing to fail sometimes and be willing to, to um, take responsibility when you sometimes lash out against someone whilst your anger maybe wasn't logical. Second tip I would give is track your emotions or keep a diary or a journal in which you sometimes write about some things. Like just literally um, at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day or, or when a, a certain situation just happened, just sit down, take your journal and think, I have been feeling this emotion. What is this emotion telling me? Why am I feeling this emotion? Um, what is this telling me about certain underlying values I have, about certain things I value, about certain things I believe in that are important? And then challenge yourself further to think, is this logical? Is this reality? Is this truly so? And the great thing about practicing this thinking pattern is that the more you do it, the more naturally it will come, the more automatically it will come into your mind. And so every time in the future, um, the more you have practiced this, when a situation comes up and you feel a certain feeling and it comes up, you immediately start thinking like, wait, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling frustrated? This is not logical. I can let it go. I can just stay calm. I can just find peace. I can just be without stress or frustration and have inner peace. Third tip I would give, and this may be one of the hardest ones because you have to, um, you have to be vulnerable and open with someone, um, but it's to talk with someone. Text a good friend, something uh, a friend you can really trust, someone you can really talk to, and sit down with him and let's have a conversation about it. Um, maybe decide to work on it together, maybe decide to make each other accountability partners and maybe you could decide to come together every two weeks or once a month and then just chat with each other and update each other on how things are going and how you've been, what, what are the things that you've learned about yourself, what are the things that you have learned about emotions or how things are going, just um, it's a great thing to do, That's, this is what friendships are for I believe, um, so try it out. Okay, so this was uh, Emotions 101, <laughs> how to deal with your emotions. I hope that you get value um, out of this video um, and I would just advise you or maybe challenge you to try and think more in this way and to challenge your, your thoughts and your emotions. Um, and I hope it um, will spare you a lot of trouble and stress in the upcoming future. Take care, stay well and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye!